I'm Pete. And I'm Jeff from Akai Professional. And in this video, we'll share some exciting news about what's coming up in the world of MPC software updates. With MPC version 1.8, you'll get a dramatically improved sample editing experience. You'll get non-destructive chop implemented in both the sample world and in pad parameters. You can choose which method you want for the greatest creative effect. You'll also get live chopping of samples whilst you audition them, that's really fun, and the ability to record through VST and AUFX chains. You also get an awesome new live looper for capturing and overdubbing audio in real time, and a pad perform mode. This is a dedicated mode for assigning scales and chords and patterns to your pads so you can play MIDI instruments from your MPC in new creative ways. And we're opening up the vintage MPC emulation across the software so you can use it in any insert slot and even with the MPC Studio. We're making many other enhancements including non-destructive sample reverse and a pad offset parameter. Time for some demos. The big news for 1.8 is that we've added non-destructive sample chop. The world rejoices. Not only do we have this non-destructive chop, but we have two variations. The first works by holding a sample start and end points within pad program parameters. Let's see how it works. So this is an empty project. Let's load a sample. And then go to program edit. You'll notice we've now extended the samples tab to have four pages of parameters. There's the standard layer settings, our new slice options, the pad start and end points, and the pad loop settings. Moving back to page two, the slice parameter you'll see at the moment is set to all. This is our legacy behavior. However, we can set this to a new pad option. This setting allows every pad to have its own independent sample start and end points. Let's quickly duplicate that pad. Remember that in MPC, you're not limited to a basic 16 pad workflow. MPC has eight pad banks giving you 128 pads that you can assign your chops to. To make it easier to visualize what you're editing, we've extended the sample editor with a new program mode. In this view, you are now editing your program as it sounds with all of the filters and effects you've applied. Here you can easily adjust the pad start and end parameters. So on my first pad, here is the sample. If I move across to the second pad, I can quickly set the start point to be just the snare drum. I can then move to my third pad and pick out a different chord from the piano. And then moving across to the fourth pad, I'm going to pick out one last chord. And I'm now ready to make a simple piece of music with that. Before showing you our other non-destructive chop facilities, let's take a look at some of the improvements we've made to sample edit, because these workflows underpin the new sample slicing experience. You'll see trim and chop now live on the same F key, but we've also brought their functionality closer together. In 1.8, trim is essentially a more detailed view of one of your chop slices. 1.8 really improves the sample edit workflow. We've expanded the number of F keys to two rows to allow for quick access to all the most important sample edit functions. The second row is accessed by holding down Shift. You can now quickly zoom from the hardware using the F keys or the Q links. 
To improve the ergonomics of sample editing, the resolution of the data wheel is now tied to the zoom factor. So zooming out makes the data wheel adjust in coarser sample increments. Zooming in allows for finer adjustment right up to single sample steps. Let's move across to sample chop. We've refined the chop workflow so it's easier and clearer to chop by threshold, by BPM, by region, or to work with your slices manually. And we've added a new live chop feature. This allows you to add slices on the fly in real time as you're auditioning a sample. Here I have an instrumental sample. I'm going to use the slice plus button to add my first slice at the beginning of the sample. I can now trigger that sample and add slices in real time using the Slice Plus button. At any point, I can stop the process and refine the slices start and end point. And then I can go back and carry on live chopping. As you can see, this is one of the many features in 1.8 that makes MPC the best hardware platform on the market for sample chopping. So this leads on to the second way to non-destructively assign parts of a sample to a pad in version 1.8. Unlike previous MPC software versions, when you slice a sample in 1.8, those slice points are actually saved into the sample itself. This allows a fundamentally different way of working with slices. You can now not only assign a sample to one of your pads, but you can assign a particular slice of that sample to that pad. In this way, you can have multiple pads using the same sample, but using different parts depending on the slice selected. If you want to chop samples in a less performative way, then we've added a movable cue playhead. You can adjust this freely through the sample. You can audition the sample from the cue point using the play cue button. And also insert a slice at the cue point with the slice plus button. On our shift F keys, we've included options to remove a single slice or clear all slices. In 1.8, we have removed any limitation on the slices start and end point. Now, with linked slices off, you can have overlapping slices, non-contiguous slices, and you can even have slices that run out of order. To make the MPC workflow awesome, we've added a number of ways to automatically create programs using this slice technology. Let's now see it in action. Here we are in CHOP, with a sample that I've already sliced up. We've always been able to press convert to create a new program from a slice sample, but now in 1.8 we have a whole pile of new non-destructive slice base options. You can now assign a single slice to one pad, or create a new program that refers to your sample slices, not making any new samples in the process. This is utterly excellent. It means that you won't run out of sample memory or fill your sample pool with a slew of derived samples. Plus, you can still have all the old destructive options you had before. 1.8 now saves the sample slices into the audio file itself. This means you can take an entire song, chop it up into 128 different slices, save it, and then when you drag that sample into a new project, all your slices will be ready for you to use immediately. So 
Sample Record is another area that's received love in the 1.8 release. You can now sample through VST and audio unit effects. All of this cool new slicing functionality is available within Program Edit. However, there are a few more 1.8 gems in the Program Editor that you'll want to use. First up is the real-time reverse pad parameter. The sample on this pad sounds nice and conventional when it's playing forwards, but we laugh in the face of convention. Switch on reverse and it sounds like this. Far better. Our new pad offset parameter was inspired by the MPC 4000. It allows you to delay the playback of a pad sample with a negative sample offset or start playing some way into that sample with a positive sample offset. When you use this with multiple layers on one pad, you can easily create a flamming effect with a single sample. For example, this pad has one clap on two layers with no offset, but we can thicken it up by offsetting one layer for a flam effect. We can take that to an extreme with four differently offset layers. You probably spotted a new tab hiding under F1 on the sample record page. Press it to switch into version 1.8's awesome new looper. This is a fully featured looper that carefully integrates into MPC's existing sampling workflow. The looper allows you to capture, layer, reverse and insert audio in real time, all in sync with your current sequence. Once you've recorded a loop, you can send it directly to a pad to incorporate it into your sequence. It's really simple. Just hit export, tap a pad, hit keep, and then there it is, ready to play. Finally, let's look at the new pad perform mode. This makes using your pads within plugin MIDI and key group programs so much more fun. It allows you to assign a scale of any kind to the pads, be it major, minor, pentatonic, or a number of other creative scales and modes. And you can even map banks of chords across your pads. It's simple to use and it makes playing music on your MPC easy and fun. Because MPC provides eight banks of pads, you can quickly and easily jump up and down octaves as you play. Let's see how it works. So here I am in the new pad before mode. It looks cute, doesn't it? You can choose to map a scale of your choice in a key of your choice, starting from an octave that you decide. Of course, you can hop up through your MPC banks to get to higher octaves quickly. The scale's root notes are highlighted on the pads in red, so you know where each octave scale is anchored. Here I've mapped F major across the pads. It can just as easily be F minor, or something more fun, like a pentatonic scale. We've also got many ways to map chords across the pads. Here's a simple mapping of seventh chords. You'll find lots more fun can be had in this mode. So that's what's in store for the MPC 1.8 update. You'll get comprehensive non-destructive chop an improved sample edit workflow, our awesome new looper, pad perform mode, and so much more. We'll reveal more information about 1.8 as it nears release. 
follow Akai Pro for more details. Thanks for watching.